الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله a very important hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam which shows us the importance of our intention the importance of our intention with regards to worship with regards to ibadah and as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned with regards to the concept of ibadah in Islam al-ibadah kullu ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yarda min a'mal وأفعال الظاهر والباطن أو كما قال شيخ الإسلام. so he said that ibadah or worship it is a comprehensive term which includes everything that Allah loves and is pleased with from deeds that are internal meaning ibadah or worship of the heart and those deeds which are external meaning those actions of the limbs. And what affirms for us this is the hadith at hand, which is the hadith on Amir al-Mu'mineen, Abi Hafs, Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, qal, Sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a yaqool, Innama a'malu bin niyat, wa innama li kullimriyan manawa, Faman kana al-hijjutu al-Allahi wa rasooli, Fahijjutu al-Allahi wa rasooli, Wa man kana al-hijjutu li dunya yusibaha o imra'atin, يَنْكِهُهَا فَهِجْتُ وَلَمَاهَا جَرَى إِلَيْهِ أَخْرَجَاهُ شَيْخَان In this hadith of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Abi Hafs, Umar ibn al-Khattab, رضي الله تعالى He said that I heard the Messenger of Allah, صلى الله عليه وسلم, saying Verily, actions are tied to the intention And everyone will get that for which he intended Therefore, he who migrates for Allah and his messenger, then he has migrated for Allah and his messenger. And he who migrates for some worldly gain or to take some woman in marriage, then he will get that for which he intended. And this is in Bukhari, in Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet wasallam, as we mentioned, this hadith shows us the importance of uh, having the correct intention with regards to worship. And... The main, some of the main benefits derived from this hadith are first and foremost that that number one That intention is required for all deeds. That our intention is required for all of our deeds. This means this means that any action that you do that it requires that you have the intention to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, for example, what is going to distinguish your worship, for example, compared to the movements of someone who's a practitioner of yoga, for example. Maybe they're doing sujood and they're doing certain poses. And what distinguishes the prayer is that your intention for doing those movements and if there is aspects that resemble, the difference will be through your intention. That you are intending to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that distinguishes your actions from that of what the yoga practitioner practices. Likewise, or more just as important as another condition for our worship to be accepted, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aside from the intention 
is that we do it in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu meaning that we follow the sunnah, we pray how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prays. So for example, in the example of prayer, as we mentioned, that your intention, that you're, intent, you're intending to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And secondly, that you have and your prayer is in accordance with how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam prayed. So that means you met the two requirements for having your worship accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, the first benefit we derive from this hadith is that the intention is required uh, with regards to our deeds. The second benefit that we derive from this hadith is that our reward is commensurate with our intention. Which means that when we have the intention to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, that this is the highest reward you can get. And that means this is something khalisli wajhillah. That means you're doing an action which is purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're purely worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, if you do an action, for example, in order to please the people along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say, for example, the minor shirk, you begin to show off in your ibadah. So again, taking the example of the prayer, you come to the masjid, you begin to pray, and all of the sudden, through the whisperings of the shaitan, or through your own evil actions, you begin to show off, you begin to beautify your prayer. You begin to concentrate on the spot even more because you know people are looking at you. So then you begin to lose reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you are showing off. In fact, that can make ibtal or it can nullify your prayer unless you begin to correct your intention. So all of us are afflicted by this problem. However, what is going to distinguish whether our action of worship is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not, or whether it becomes falsified totally, is the fact that we restrain ourselves and we come back to focus in our attention and perfecting our prayer for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal alone. The third benefit that we derive from this hadith is this hadith uh, shows us the benefit of making hijra to Allah and His Messenger. So, what we're referring to by hijra, habatibillah, that means that you are uh, the hijra, the asl of the hijra, that is referred to in this hadith and in other narrations, is that you are making hijra from the uh, land of shirk or dis, uh, of disbelief to the land of Tawheed or the land of uh, Islam. So for example, one who makes hijra, they migrate from uh, America, for example, to migrate to Saudi Arabia or to migrate when Yemen used to be a stable country or to migrate to some other Muslim country, a land that is a Muslim country. So here you are performing the Islamic concept of hijra. You are migrating from the land of Islam, uh, land of disbelief to the land of belief. Or it could be from the land of bid'ah to the land of sunnah. So for example, if there is a place that is a Muslim land, but it is immersed in uh, un-Islamic concepts, you know, a lot of uh, religious, religious innovation, grave worship, uh, you know, going to the saints and re and requesting them to uh, do uh, actions of ibadah on your behalf, uh, sacrificing for the dead saints, whatever the case may be, un-Islamic practices that can be aberrations in the religion, meaning bid'ah, and this could be bid'ah kufriya or bid'ah uh, ghayra kufriya. You know, this can be bid'ah, in religious innovation, which is takes you out of the fold of Islam, or bid'ah that does not take you out of the fold of Islam. 
However, you lead a land such as this to a land where there is less bid'ah, where the, the land is more uh, in accordance with the practice of the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. This is also a type of hijra. Another type of hijra that is also mentioned in the Sunnah of the present of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which is also important for us to consider, because the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that this is one of the greatest types of hijra, and this is, the, as he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, the muhajir is the one who leaves their the sinful practices to uh, to come to uh, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa taala, meaning they leave off disobedience to Allah to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is a type of hijra meaning a hijra or migration from your sins leaving your sins to come to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a last important thing I want to mention as a qa'idah or one of the qa'id that are, is derived from this hadith as the uh, scholars mentioned one of the principles that are derived from this hadith is that Al Amur bil Muqasidaha. Al Amur bil Muqasidaha. Meaning, Al Amur bil Muqasidaha. But this principle is meaning that the uh, affair or act that one is trying to perform is in accordance with its intention. So, therefore, uh, a person who they intend to do an act and 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 far'an or another principle which is derived from this is al amur bi maqasida or al uh, al wasail laha ahkam al maqasid which means the means to something takes takes the same reward as the thing that you're doing so for example the person who intends to go to the masjid and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during its time. And they use a something which is normally mubah. Normally it doesn't have reward to it, but it's permissible to use. For example, a car, or a bicycle, or a skateboard, whatever the case may be. These items are normally what is considered mubah, meaning there's no reward for using a skateboard. There's no reward for using an automobile. There's no reward for using a bicycle. But now that you're using that means that wasila to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you then get reward for using that thing to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you are using it with the intention to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every time you're pedaling on that bicycle, every time you put your foot down on that skateboard, bi'idnillah ta'ala, you, and, and you're on your way to the masjid, you are getting the reward uh, of standing in the prayer and you're receiving reward for Allah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Al wasila laha ahkam al muqasid. Your intention is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you're using something which is permissible to use, which has no reward with it, to be a means to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, therefore, that means becomes a means for you to gain reward, and you gain reward for using that. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala Muhammad.